and generally associates heavy machinery with heavy engineering, such as motor car bodies or steel plate, products that are synonymous with durability. But at this factory in East London, the finished commodities are essentially tiny and fragile things that, far from being durable, literally go up in smoke within a few weeks. Yes, you've guessed it, this is part of the manufacture of cigarettes, a single one that would stretch for three miles if it weren't cut. As it is, the machine makes over 1,000 every minute. Hello, hello. Check it out. I bought a comic book. It's um, Superman, Adventures of Superman 500. I've got one of these already, but it's um, open. So I thought I'd needed to pick this up. I think it was like two quid or something. So I can't argue with that. Um, yes, look at this, buying a back issue. Also, I've... Um, uh, added to my standing order a few of those future state titles I'm excited to see what they're all about after the end of um, Dark Knight's death metal which kind of like it was so good it was so good like the destruction and then like reamalgamation of the of the DCU and uh, the introduction of Elseworlds like into the I don't know if anyone's read it or not. There's maybe a spoiler there, but they've kind of added the Elseworld Worlds universe into the the, the the DCU. So that's going to be quite cool. We get like a Gotham by Gaslight Batman cruising around. Or the, what was the other one? The speed, Speeding Bullets, where he's like, it's, super, it's Superman as Batman. Anyway, I'm just speaking shit, but uh, let's go see what's happening. Yet even in this age of automation, cigarettes are still made by hand. But whereas it would take most of us best part of a day to make a packet of 50, and then not perfectly, skilled workers like this produce about 1,200 a day. So I'm trying to deal with dogs here. They are causing me much grief. Um, Edie, what's happening? There's two, th we have two dogs. We have a new dog. Hello. Um, and they patrol the street. They own this street. You cannot get into this street without them knowing about it. And shouting at you. So that's what they're up to. They're just about to go apeshit because someone's just driven down the road. But anyway, uh, this is something I've been working on. Maybe not too interesting, but it's interesting to me. It's a record label, I guess from, I guess from the eighties. Yeah, they're called Wyndham Hill, and the, it's mostly seems to be, um, uh instrumental music, piano solos, uh, jazz instrumentals, guitar and strings. Um, Evie, what's wrong? But yeah, I found this album, uh, December by George Winston. And I just, I love this. This is what I listen to when I'm reading. I'm reading um, Peter V. Brett, the painted, I'm actually on the third one of this just now. It's called The, the Daylight War. Uh, but I would recommend any um, uh, fantasy fans, Peter V. Brett, The Painted Man, the first book's called, uh, and the, the series is called The Demon Cycle, I think. Amazing. Amazing. Um, so yeah, more Wyndham Hill. This is just all I've found. I've just kind of been buying various samplers. This one's called The Winter Solstice. I'm really into, like, themes for some, like, themed records for some reason, like instrumental stuff when I'm reading like winter <laughs> winter and Christmas I don't know you tell me what my problem is but yeah uh this is is this Wyndham Hill yeah William Ackerman Imaginary Roads I really like the design they like the the label seems to take control of the this is annoying isn't it I need to stop doing that the the label seems to take control of the the artwork I don't know if these this has had a, seen a bit of danger this one I think the record's okay though. Yeah, the record's sweet. Um, yeah, they seem to 
you know, have a overruling decision on the artwork because all the artwork's similar. Or like the, you know, like the border and then the picture in the middle. This one says loaned for promotion only, not for sale. In this cool little gold stamp. You can hardly, I can hardly read it, so you've got no chance. But yeah, that's cool. So this is Shadow Facts, Too Far to Whisper. These are like a, like a, like a jazz, soft jazz. It's okay. But when you're churning through comics, you just need something in the background, especially if the wife's watching the telly. We celebrating it. New beginnings. Cheers. Gin and tonic, please, Mel. I don't think so, no. It's all right. I'll get there. Did you want something, Barry? Maybe you'd like to come and join me. You got some front. Suit yourself. For you, Pat. Now, you dirty rotten bitch. Get out of my pub right now! I'm not going anywhere. I said go out! Hang on till I've had my drink. Now, somebody, somebody get out of my pub or so help me I'll no, get out! Out it. No, go on! So that's what I'm kind of using these for. This is. Okay, so this is. Uh, hang on, we'll show you this one first. They do these records. This is like piano sampler. And they, I think I've got another sampler. I thought I had another one. Um, I might have shown it already. But the, these are quite cool. If you're interested in listening to any Wyndham Hill stuff, just buy a couple of these. Uh, like the piano sampler. I think there's just like a... Um, that winter solstice is everybody as well. It's like just everybody on the label putting tunes in. It's quite cool. It's quite cool. And they use the... Um, where is it? That DMM, Direct Metal Mastering. That was quite interesting to read up on, like the mas the mastering process and, you know, getting it c as correct as they can in the master before they churn them out. But yeah, that's cool. Anyway, Wyndham Hill. And this is um, David Land's Heart Sounds. So this is kind of the same deal, but it's another... Uh, record label they're called Narada which I don't know why makes me feel like some sort of cult thing but I don't know they seem more culty than Wyndham Hill we like Wyndham Hill so yes uh, instrumental music Here I should just show some some other stuff that I picked up um, from a charity shop in in between lockdowns. UK's back in lockdown again. I'm back doing uh, shift work, so I'm like I'm off for a week and then and then on for like a full week, pretty much uh, twelve hour shifts just to make up the time so it doesn't affect our wages. It's a bit of a pain in the arse, but the time off's great. So anyway, a uh, couple of records I got before the when the charity shops opened and closed again. Uh, the Magical Mystery Tour. This is ace. I've been wanting one of these. Um, I don't know if you remember, a couple of years ago I was in the mad uh, buying up all the Beatles. I got like a like a full size twelve inch Magical Mystery Tour, and I knew it wasn't right. It was like a modern pressing. So I finally found the uh, the EP. I think I paid a tenner for this. And yeah, it's sweet. It is sweet. And there's a cool, like, um, there's a cool book. Let's see if I can show you some of the, there's like a, quite a thick book in between. I think this is part of the uh, conspiracy about Paul McCartney's death. Because it says there, I was, he's not alive anymore. Um, yeah, the the supposed death of Paul McCartney in 1960-whatever it was. When did this come out? This was 1967, so yes. 
Sweet, Magical Mystery Tour. I think I was a tenner. Awesome. And the other one I got was this, Unknown Pleasures by, uh, ooh, look at the fingerprints, by Joy Division. And I saw this and this was a fiver. I couldn't believe it. I thought this would have been a lot more expensive. It's really nice as well. It's a load of static on the record. It's really dusty, but... Look at that. But yeah, it's super sweet. I really love this. It's got that song, um, is it Day of the Lords? Or So yes, that's a bunch of records anyway. Hi. Okay, so we've had been, we've been having issues out in the garage, um, winter time issues. I thought the place was uh, watertight. It is not watertight. So there was a massive panic and um, uh, rearranging. So everything's out of there now. I didn't lose anything, but I was really worried about all the consoles, all the the damp hitting the consoles and stuff. So it's okay. I've checked everything. It was a pain in the arse. It was a bit, bit actually, a uh, bit worrying for a while there. I thought I might have lost a bunch of money just, just wrecking it. I was having to throw away a bunch of consoles. I'm si I'm sitting on like, I don't know, ten, fifteen consoles out there, and it's. Yeah, it's a little bit scary, so need to reevaluate what's going on with all of that shit. I've got literally just boxes of shit. So anyway, but when I was in there, I found these. These are my Proyos from, well, this one is my OG from back in the day. Uh, well, it's really not liking that, is it? Green and red. I got a new string. And this one is, um, I got this at a jumble sale or something. This one's glow in the dark, so we'll slap in a, a loom shot right here. But yeah, man, I was looking these up on the internet and these are like, this is Proyo 2, and these are like not, not cheap. And that was what kind of, like, the what, the, like the, everything getting damp and stuff kind of, opened up my eyes to what I'm actually, you know what I mean? Nothing individually is is worth millions of pounds, but together it's quite a bit of money sat there and I need to kind of think more about properly looking after it. Um, Cause like these are going like 30, 40 quid. And I mean, I know it's not a lot, but they're like 80 quid. There's like a week's shopping sat like right there, just in shit sat in my garage. So, yeah, just kind of like reevaluating what's happening with everything and uh, just, yeah, making sure it's all looked after because it's as much as a pain in the ass it would be to have to like individually sell everything if it ever came to that. I, I need to, it needs to still be nice if that ever happens. So, yes, anyway, let's, let's do some tricks on the yo yo. That's what I was got these out for. Okay, yo yo, let's go. I think this is, oh no, I can do the, mm, no, I cannot. Well, yes, that is, that is everything. That is all I've, uh, I've got for you, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, next, next one's going to be 150. I know they've not been very, um, consistent recently at all. I used to be really good. I did one a week for, I don't know, two years, two and a bit years. But yeah, um, next one's 150. So we'll see what happens. I'll have to put some effort in next time. Anyway, peace and we'll, uh, we'll see you again. Even more specialised, in fact little known in this country, are cigarettes tipped with rose petals for people who find the ordinary cork tips harsh to the lips. Needless to say, the biggest sale is overseas.
Naturally, this work is seasonal between April and August and again between October and December because of the availability of roses. The specially grown variety that is used for tipping retains its colour for about 18 months, although a few have been known to retain their colour for 15 years. Each rose gives an average of 10 tips, and a skilled tipper can generally keep up with her colleague who makes the cigarette itself, that is about 1,200 a day. So soft to the lips, you wouldn't know you're smoking. <coughs> <coughs>